Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. I just wanted to present on the work that I have been doing this summer. Uh, this summer, I was given the opportunity to be a part of the Chinese hospital internship led by Professor Bien and sponsored by the Global Health Department at Princeton University. The goal of the internship was to explore and research Chinese hospitals. As COVID-19 has taken over the world and changed our lives dramatically, Chinese healthcare and other aspects of Chinese culture and society have been discussed in depth. However, as Professor Bien pointed out um, and explained as the reason she wished to create this internship was that not much has been said about the Chinese hospital, which is the main healthcare institution and healthcare provider in China. Therefore, through this internship, we hope to shed more light on the current situation, as well as better understand the Chinese hospital and its roots in China. Unfortunately, due to COVID-19, this internship was entirely virtual. But throughout the past two months, I've met with Professor Bien, as well as some of the other students working on the internship over Zoom. We have dis engaged in discussion about our individual research ideas. When we have not been able to meet over Zoom, we've also messaged our thoughts on some of the articles we've been asked to read. Some examples of the topics we've discussed are um, emerging telehealth industry in China, workplace violence against doctors and nurses, and the recent push for hospital privatization in China. As for our individual research, I initially focused on doing a general literature overview of the Chinese hospital. I did a general search on multiple research databases such as PubMed and Google Scholar um, to try and find articles about Chinese hospital management and history. In this way, I came to better understand the background of these hospitals and how they have changed in the past few decades. These searches were also important because it gave us a sense of how hospitals have been talked about and discussed by Chinese researchers, doctors, and professors. It seems that in the past few decades, the Chinese hospital has been the center of healthcare reform in China. There's a heated debate over whether hospitals should be private or public and how new insurance systems that have been put in place over the past 20 years impact their operations. However, over the course of the summer, I shifted my focus a little and began to research the clinical trial system in China. Through my initial research, I noticed that a huge part of the Chinese healthcare system was the pharmaceutical industry and drug prescriptions. Um, in fact, China has the largest, um, second largest pharmaceutical industry in the world behind the United States. Um, it also, in the past 20 years, drug purchases have reached up to 50% of healthcare spending. Um, and I've also found that um, in the past few years, uh, researchers and professors have wished to improve clinical trial policy um, and kind of increase the speed of trial approval. I will discuss this a little bit later in the presentation about why this is important. But um, more general information about clinical trials in China um, and how they're related ch to Chinese hospitals is that many clinical trials are done in hospitals. There are essentially no private practices in China, so that is why um, the main place for clinical trials or hospitals. Also, the scale of hospitals in China provide a good pool of individuals to participate in China in trials. Um, so just because hospitals are the main healthcare provider in China, um, there are many, many people go to these hospitals. And so clinical trial researchers are able to find many volunteers. Um, actually, in 2014, there was um, new policy put in place by the government um, for hospitals conducting clinical trials. Um, some things within the new policy is that there's an establishment, there must be establishment of internal rules for clinical trials. Um, there's centralized financing for clinical trials and there must, have, there must be intense trial supervision. Um, Within my research, I came across the Chinese Clinical Trial Registry, which was founded in 2005 by two professors, uh, Wu Taishang and Li Youping. Um, it is affiliated with the West China Hospital at Sichuan University and is the Chinese representative to the World Health Organization's International Clinical Trial Registry platform. Um, the goal of the registry is to encourage researchers to register their clinical trials um, to increase transparency and good clinical practice. Um, this is both ethical and practical implications, um, which I will discuss again later um, in the presentation. Um, so part of my research on the database was finding out how many clinical trials have been registered each year since the founding of the registry um, in 2005. And so clearly in this graph, you can see a 
significant increase in the number of um, clinical trials that had been registered on the platform um, in the past 15 years. Um, already within six months of 2020, um, it has the number of clinical trials registered has surpassed the 2019 number. Um, and you can see that the uh, clinical trial registry's goals to encourage researchers to um, register their trials is succeeding. Um, and every single year, there is a significant increase in the number of trials registered. Um, another part of my research was that um, I looked at the number of clinical trials that have been registered um, for COVID-19 um, since COVID-19 appeared in China in January 20, uh, or sorry, in December 2019. Um, since January 23rd, 2020, 734 COVID-19 related clinical trials have been registered on the clinical trial registry. Um, this first one was registered, the first COVID-19 trial was registered at the Wuhan Jin Intan Hospital. Um, it was a randomized open label blank control trial for the efficacy and safety of lopinavir, ritonavir, and interferon alpha 2b in the hospitalization of patients with no novel coronavirus pneumonia. Um, I also wanted to see the number of those trials um, that were based in Wuhan, um, which was the first epicenter of COVID-19. And it seemed that 21% of the total number of COVID-19 clinical trials have been registered um, by Wuhan hospitals. So that's 158 trials. Um, my, I didn't do much analysis of this data, um, but my next steps, because I hope to continue this research for my thesis, is looking more in depth at these trials and the specific hospitals that were conducting them. And so learning more about those hospitals management systems and how um, they are trying to figure out good clinical practice um, within the hospitals. Now, finally, as I said, I would talk a little bit more about um, the significance of these changes in clinical trial policy. Um, and the two professors who started the clinical trial policy uh, clinical trial registry. Um, they have done many lectures and written many articles on um, why they hope to encourage good clinical practice and increase transparency um, with, throughout China about clinical trials. And they believe that acknowledging the issues in clinical trial policy and practice helps to address both the practical and ethical problems that exist regarding research in China. Um, they believe that the increased transparency of clinical trials could potentially speed up the drug approval processes and provide individuals who wish to volunteer um, in these clinical trials the necessary information which will keep them safe. Um, in fact, however, the Chinese Clinical Trial Registry is not the only group trying to address these issues. Um, the Chinese government has also gotten involved and the WHO is involved in trying to um, encourage researchers to practice good clinical pra um, practice and also um, make sure that they're incredibly transparent about their clinical trials. Um, so this is the gist of my research this summer. I'm hoping to continue it again um, even more for my thesis and um, I'm very grateful to have been given this opportunity this summer. I really enjoyed myself and I definitely learned a lot and it was an incredibly um, pressing topic. So that made it even more exciting. Thank you very much.